Let us now prove that two languages that are decide decidable can be um, joined. No, sorry, let me rephrase this. The conjunction of two decidable languages is a decidable language. Okay, so how do we prove this? Well, to be able to prove this, we need to show that a language is decidable. So we need to figure out what program decides the conjunction. Well, and there are many ways to prove this, but essentially, if we want to prove that something is decidable, we want to use a program that decides it. So that's the difficulty of this problem, is really figuring out which program decides this language. And here is the program that I wrote. The program says that first I run, uh, if L1 and L2 are decidable, first let's print out decidable, just for the sake of argument. So if something is decidable, that means there exists some machine that decides it. Okay, so let's open up those definitions. I'm going to do this. I'm going to open the definition here and here. Okay, so now I have a machine M1 that decides L1, and I have a machine M2 that decides L2. Okay, what, I can, what can I do with this? Well, if I have the two machines, what I could do is I run the first machine M1, and I get the result, and I get I run M2, and I get its result. And because I know M1 and M2 are decidable, they are also decided, which means they would never loop. So if they never loop, I know that by sequencing them, the whole thing wouldn't loop. Which means I would run the first machine, I would get the result, which would be either true or false, whether it accepts it or rejects it. And then I would run the machine two with the same input, and I would get either true or false here on R2. And then what I can do is I can use this special construct. I'll show you here how it's defined. And this is just returning accept if B is true or reject if B is false. So that's what I'm returning. Basically, I'm converting a Boolean to either true or false, to either reject or accept. So this whole thing should decide the language L1 and L2, right? Because if both of these things accept, then R1 and R2 will also accept. And if either of them rejects, the whole thing rejects, right? But they never loop. So this should also decide, right? So this first line doesn't loop. Second one never loops. Third one could not loop because the result is either accept or, or reject. So by simple case analysis, we can very easily see that halt doesn't loop. Okay, so... To go back, we want to prove that a language is decidable. We somehow found the program that uh, shows that shows that it decides, the algorithm. And this is the algorithm we give. Now we have to prove that this algorithm decides the language. So what do we do? We use p decides def. And that gives us two things to prove. First one is to show that the language, the program recognizes the language. And secondly, we, we need to show that the program is a decider. So first, let's prove that the, the program recognizes the language. Um, so we use p recognizes def, right? Because it recognizes the definition of p recognizing, uh, which gives us two things to prove. First, we need to prove that, let me just do an intros. First, we need to prove if I run my program and I run my program and it returns accept, right? So if I, I have this combination, the program that I just gave, if it returns accept, then I have to be able to show that L1 accepts I and L2 accepts I. This is the objective to prove. How can we do this? H1 and H2 are already as simple as they can be, right? There's nothing else we can do with these assumptions. So essentially what we need to do is we need to break this down. We need to break down H, simplify it, and then be able to conclude that L1 terminates and L2 terminates. And let's try to get the intuition why this is true. Let's think. So for this whole thing accepts, right? So for this whole thing to accept, first and foremost, neither of them can loop, right? Because if either of them loops, the whole thing loops, and this would be loop. But it's not. It's accept, right? So what do we need to do? If th For this to accept, we need to do something with R1, right? We know that by calling M1, it will run it, and there is some result. Either it accepts or rejects, right? And then we run M2 and either accepts or rejects, right? And then we're going to do something with R1 and something with R2. We're going to halt with whatever Boolean we got. 
right? But we know that the whole thing accepted. So for the only way, the only way for this con this expression to return true, in which case you would get an accept, is if R1 and R2 are true, which means that R1 must be true, R sorry, R1 must be true, R2 must be true, which means that M1 accepts I and M2 accepts I. And if M1 accepts I, M1 decides L1, which means that L1 accepts I. Right? So that's what we're going to prove. So we kind of reverse engineer what the algorithm is doing to figure out that the machine is accepting. And from this connection, we know that the, the language is accepting. So first thing we do, we have a complicated assumption. We break it down with inversion. Okay. And then what we can do, whenever you see runs, you don't know what to do them do with them just call run simple all okay so now we simplified everything let's disregard what deck is although deck is pretty simple um, next we have another mlet whenever you see an mlet you have to simplify it with inversion so we simplified that now we do a run simple all let's see what happens wow so run simple all kind of clean the whole thing that's its objective so now what do we have in our assumption? We know that M1 ran I and it accepted it, and M2 ran I and it accepted it as well. We also know that M1 decides L1, which means M1 recognizes L1. So whenever M1 accepts something, L1 also accepts, right? Similarly for M2. So now we are ready to prove things. So. We have a conjunction here, we split it, and we prove each case. The way we prove it is if you do a little search for the size, you will notice that there's lots of ways of deciding things. But one very simple way, let's see if we have something similar here. We're looking for something that has like Li. And look, look what we have here. So we're saying that if we have, if M decides L, and we run the machine with I, and that gives you an accept, then the language accepts, which is exactly what we want, right? Exactly what we have. And that's the theorem we run, we, we use. We use decides run accept. Uh, so we have to supply which machine is running. And you can use auto just to take care of the easy cases. And then you can do the same thing for machine L2. And that concludes the first direction, which is to say, if my algorithm runs, I can prove that the language is accepted. So this is known as soundness for some people. The other direction is known as completeness, which is to say, if if I look at my language and I know that it accepts it, I should be able to recreate that in my program. So first we have a, a, a conjunction here. So what can we do? Well, first let's destruct it so that it, we have we simplify our assumptions. Next, what we do, we have in our goal. A sequence right because we have mlet right if you recall the the slide one of these notations first one is that mlet is a sequence so if we search for run run sequence and then some result which we don't care about how do we construct things with sequence we have four ways so either the underscore loop underscore accept underscore reject and underscore continue in this case, what do you think we have? Let's say we know that L1, uh, I is in L1, right? And we know that the machine accepts, um, sorry, M1 decides M1, which means that the machine should accept I, right? It should accept I. So if it should accept I, we know that the first, when I call this machine, it will accept it. So it sh I should use run accept. And here you really have to think. You have to look at your assumptions. There are not many of them. And just you need to be able to relate the language with the sites. So it's just exercising the definitions that we put forward in the previous video. Right? So we know that the, mach the, the word is accepted by the language. Through the sites, we can know that the machine accepts the, the input. And because the machine accepts the input, we know that this holds with accept. So we can call run accept. And then if we do a search for call, run with call, 
Okay, so if we run with call, we have these two things, run call decides accept and run call recognize accept. In our case, we know that this decides, so we can use run call decides. Okay, now we're less left with the second let, and the second let is gonna be exactly the same as the first one, so we are able to discharge it very easily. And we're left with halt with, and of course we have an end in the, in the goal, a Boolean end. So what we do is we simplify it. And now we have a halt with true. And if you search for that, you will see that there exists a constructor for that. So you can run it directly, run uh, halt with true. I apply that theorem and we are done. Finally, we need to show that our program is a decider. So if we have p decider, we have to use p decider def. And then we introduce the variables. And now we have to prove that p halts def. So, um, oh, but there's no p halts def, sorry. <laughs> so what do we need to search again? We have a sequence, let's search what we have. Oh, there's one for sequencing. So that's the one we wanna use. Uh, but there's also one that is even more specific, which says that I have a call here, right? So if you look here, there is call where the first thing is a decider, look and let call. It's exactly what we have here. So this is the most specific theorem that we have, so we want to use that if we can. And that's what I do in this line. And if I do it, now I'm left with the second uh, halts, or the second call, and because of the first one, I'm going to do something similar. And I'm left with just proving that something that halts with halts, which is trivial, uh, if you do a search, search the halts, halts with, we will see that this constructor exists and you can apply it and you're good to go. Okay, so in the next video, I'm just going to go through all the various exercises.